What's up guys, Joey here. Just some friendly advice for anyone upgrading from two sticks to four sticks. Uh, I'm on a Ryzen 5600X and D450M Mortar Max motherboard. And I wanted to share this advice because when I was in this situation two days ago, I literally could not find any resources that were like straightforward to tell me, okay, you need to do this, this, and this. And I can't give you exact settings because it does vary between motherboard and CPU memory controller quality. Uh, if you have a rough idea of what I'm talking about, hopefully. But there are a few settings that are definitely key to getting an XMP, uh, a decent XMP speed with four sticks. So a lot of people might even tell you, like if you look through Reddit for uh, Reddit threads and things like that in forums, they might even tell you that 3600 megahertz XMP with four sticks of RAM is very hard to do and you need high voltages. You can't even run over, like you couldn't do it under 1.1 sock voltage, things like that. So basically, um, when I first tried to do it, I could not even get into the BIOS uh, because I forgot to reset my, disable my XMP before adding two sticks. So if you have XMP enabled and you're adding two sticks, disable it. If you've tried to boot with four sticks and you're getting stuck, remove those two sticks. I know it's annoying, but remove it. If you don't want to clear your CMOS anyway, um, remove the two sticks you added, boot into BIOS, disable XMP, and then put the, the new sticks in. So that's one way you can get BIOS bootable and otherwise know how to clear your CMOS. That will also let you boot BIOS because it resets the sticks back to base speed, which is like 2133 or 2400 megahertz. So once you get into the BIOS booting part, um, then you'll be trying to boot into Windows. And you might find that either you'll inconsistently be booting into BIOS, like sometimes it'll work, and then you'll change one setting or you'll try to enable XMP and the XMP won't uh, boot stable. It'll be resetting itself. It'll say failed memory overclock, or you'll end up stuck trying to boot. Like it'll say the CPU light might come on, uh, which is a memory controller, but it's not actually a CPU problem. It's the RAM and the motherboard compatibility and settings are not being automatically um, automatically configured properly. So the, the main settings I want you to take a look at, because this is what helped me the most, is hopefully you have some idea of what I'm talking about. You know how to go into the overclocking section of your BIOS. You know, if you, if you press F7, it goes into advanced mode, which makes it easier to navigate and go to overclocking and the memory tuning section or advanced RAM settings section, advanced memory settings, where all your advanced timings are. Don't worry about all the different things. Like you can see there's all these, these uh, different parameters. Do not pay too much attention to that, but just take a look at, um, bank group swap for four sticks, you want this enabled. You do not want bank group swap disabled. It helps with two sticks because bank group swap alternating is generally recommended for performance reasons because you've only got two sticks. So it's, it's the way that the system communicates with the RAM and the banks of RAM. And bank group swap basically um, helps with stability to have it enabled. So you actually want to enable it. And gear down mode, if it's disabled, definitely enable it uh, when you're first tuning. To get in, this is to get into Windows. Um, TWRRD one is perfectly fine with two sticks, but for four sticks to boot into Windows, you want it to be on three or higher. Uh, three seems to be the general recommendation, and that's one setting that you just might have overlooked. And then RTT NOM uh, on on two sticks disabled is the general recommendation, and on four sticks you need it on 34. So this is what I'm just telling you because if I had not figured this out like through two days, not, not two days, I figured I was booting into Windows on the first day and I was stability testing and tightening the timings down on the second day. But if I just like, when I tried to look up this stuff initially, I searched Google, I'm like two sticks versus four sticks, how to stabilize. And there was no results in YouTube. There was like some general advice, but most of it was benchmarking performance rather than telling me which settings I need to pay attention to. So just to say that one more time to clarify, bank group swap, enable, disable alt, DDM, enable, TWRRD, set it to three, RTT non, enable it to 34. Don't have it. So you can see here on the left, on the left is my two gig timings and configuration and voltages. So you see the VSTOC, the VDDP, the CTD, the IOD, and on the right is my this will vary between CPU. You might have to go a little bit higher on VSOC, you might have to go a little bit higher on IOD depending on your kit of RAM and the timings. But if you're on a budget kit like me, like my actual kit's baseline speed is 18, 22, 22. Uh, I'm on a Hynix CJR, very cheap kit of RAM, and I bought a second kit and added it. And I was able to get it stable at 3,600 megahertz, passing the HCI MEM test, which is what DRM calculator uses. 
Um, I, I do recommend you learn DRAM calculator, even though it only goes up to Zen 2. The Zen 2 adv uh, timings for safe and fast are generally cross compatible to Zen 3. Uh, even though it's been discontinued and you know not many people recommend it anymore, I still found it useful for learning. Uh, it's really good as a learning baseline. Like what can I, what timings when you when you compare um, the fast and the stable memory timings, it shows you which timings you can tighten down to improve your latency. But basically, I was able to maintain 59 to 60 NS latency with a budget kit of RAM. And the the generally the, the best you can get is with Samsung B die, which is triple the price. And you can get the latency down to like 55, 54 NS with a lot of tuning, but it also needs higher voltages. It needs like, you know, 1.45 to 1.5 DRAM voltage and things like that. You can see here my VDM is still at 1.35 with this uh, four sticks. And I didn't have to adjust the reference voltage at all. But just to give you that baseline advice where if you're just lost, like you have no idea what you're doing and you're good, you might you might be watching this video on your phone and you're like, what setting do I change to get to get my XMP to boot into Windows, and you just keep boot failing, or you know, you you change you're changing the primary timings, and you thought oh, I'll loosen the primary timings, that'll get me into Windows, and it doesn't do anything. And like I even tried, I went like I was at like um because my base kit speed is 18, and I went like 19, 22, 22. You know, I I increased all the primary timings, thinking that was the problem, and that'll help me increase stability. But really, it was GDM, B, BGS, uh, Bank Group Swap, Gear Down Mode. And the TWRD, I had it on one at first, and that was even stopping me booting into the BIOS. Once I set that to three and I got the RTT NOM to 34, um, and these are weird, like I don't even really, like I haven't fully researched it. I did some rough researching, but I still don't know what the majority of these timings do. I just know that these ones are the main ones that are affecting the two stick versus four stick uh, bootability and stability. And you can just see here, I was able, this was two days worth. Um, on the second day, I tightened the timings down. On the first day, I was running safe timings, which is just higher for the secondary timings, really. Um, and on the second day, I tightened the secondary timings down a little little bit, but still, I'm very inexperienced when it comes to this stuff. But, you know, it's, it's better to have some advice or someone just reach out and go, hey, try these settings, and this might get you booting into Windows and just help you if you're stuck. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.